just continuing about my story before. So we, so when we took on the business, we had to take on the son of the business as a part of the conditions of the deal, um, and we had a contract with him for two two years. Um, and we were happy to do that initially because there was a good working relationship there and and we didn't see it as an issue. But as we got into the business, we saw that there were some cultural changes that we wanted to make and we couldn't make them until that person that we had to take on had, had left because every time we try to implement something different, he would continue behaving in that same way that he'd always had. Like he'd had the business for about 15 years, so it was like, you know, it was quite ingrained into him. So when his two years was up, we had to make the really hard decision of actually saying, look, we would like you to move on now and um, try something different or do something else. But actually it's not working for us anymore. And there was a few other issues that were more serious than that as well involved. But, but it was... It was clear that if we wanted to progress the company on into something else, into something different and create better a better environment, um, that it wasn't going to happen with him still there. And so that's just an example of getting rid of obstacles that empower people to act. And as soon as we did do that, make that change, and there was also someone else who had come who was an employee that we'd taken on when we first brought the business and was very close to the son that we had to say goodbye to. Um, we He also left, which, again, just, just brought this huge change and we've been able to completely change the culture of the company and have habits that had been around for so long just completely removed, which has been great. So, yeah, so that allowing sometimes those obstacles – to be removed will empower people to be able to act and behave differently and be able to progress into the change that is needed. So the next one is achieve and celebrate quick wins. And um, that's again about breaking down a bigger vision into smaller tasks, which would be um, associated with, you know, I think of smart goals, you know, having things that you can see that are attainable, achievable and realistic and time framed. And because often, you know, if a vision is too big, then it can actually, people can get disillusioned and, and lose focus because it's not how you, it's bad goal planning. You should break it down. So, so they talk about, you know, celebrating, celebrating little things that have happened and making sure that there's, there's small achievements along the way that you can, that you can be focusing on and reporting about and saying well done or saying hey this, this didn't work but this worked or you know and then keep it moving so even though those short-term wins happen it's like you've got to continue to keep that bigger focus out there at the same time I think that is very like so important because I know for myself you know if I am trying to change something which I often am um I will I just I have to have small goals because it it's got to be daily daily little things that I'm changing every day and being able to go yes I did that yes I did that which will overall achieve the bigger bigger goal um so and then make the change stick is the last one and that is talking about how you know if until it is how things are done around here footnote three it's it's not, it hasn't stuck. And an example of um, of this, an illustration of this was a story in a case study which talked about, um, a story in the, sorry, the article from the Harvard Business Review. And it talked about how if you can, the CEO, if he leaves and he's the one that's bring, bring about the change, you have to be so careful about who your successor is because they may not have those same abilities to bring about change as you did as a CEO. So you have to be very careful that you don't assume too quickly that something has stuck when it isn't actually quite stuck enough for you to really remove what you bring to the organisation or you just assume we can move on to the next thing when actually the 
that it isn't, it hasn't, I think it really does put it into good terms when it says that the way things are done around here, because that, you know, that defines culture, footnote two. So, so making sure that, you know, that part of it is, it's just ingrained into who the organisation are before you kind of take your hands off and say, right, we can move on to something else or we can stop looking at that now. So yeah, so that was that was such a awesome model to look at. And I, in class, Sam did say, footnote one, about that this would be one of the one of the best things that we learned through the course. And I would have to totally agree. I think that that model really does give some some excellent excellent um, understanding of what it takes to bring about change. So I'm going to really take that with me. So thanks, Sam. Um, next thing I want to talk about, which I thought was really awesome, was, a, and we didn't talk about this in class, but it's within the textbook. So it's called Appreciative Inquiry, which is AI. And AI is a technique for leading change that engages indiv individuals, teams, and entire organizations by reinforcing positive messages and focusing on learning from success. And this is like quite up my alley, being a visionary, kind of dreaming, kind of positive, hate negative person. Um, I just, I was like, oh, wow, this is so awesome. I'm so going to use this. So I'm going to try it on my children. Um, so this, this talks about, there's four keys to implementing this AI, Appreciative Inquiry, and they come, they're discovery, dream, design, and destiny. So discovery is identifying the best of what exists, footnote two. And it's, it's allowing your employees to, or the people that you're trying to change, or trying to bring change to, um, to identify what is the absolute best things currently about the organization that they love or like identifying traits, identifying just the ways things are done. And um, a few examples was, you know, like um, a few, they loved getting together for staff functions um, and they loved, you know, just, just a little thing like that, but that was a big part of what they loved about their organisation. And then the next step is once they've identified these things is to dream dream about, okay, well, what, how could we add to this? What else could be the best things about our company? How could we add more things that we can see would be really, really beneficial for us as a company? And so that's the dream stage. And then the next stage is design. And then it's like people go away and they start to put together values and identify how they can, how they can implement or how they can instill and support and these values within to, into the organization and kind of get that the thinking kind of idea idea concreted and then the last stage is the destiny and that's like creating and implementing the changes into the organization and designing the processes and bringing about like the training programs and the performance reviews and all those kind of things that are needed to to take the the dreams and make them a reality. Um, and I, yeah, I thought it was really, really, really cool. That also, yeah, the, um, the design stage is formulating action plans to achieve what should be. And the sustain, and the destiny stage is what will be for the future. So I probably could have described that a little bit differently, but that, that is, that is a real, it's a really, really good, um, illustration of a way that you can bring about change that's coming from a completely positive point of view and not focusing on what's wrong with the company but actually focusing on what's right and how how you can use that to direct it to direct focus and and direct people's thoughts and people's words and people's ideas into looking at those areas rather than looking at what hasn't been right and what is what is wrong and I, I think that also relates back to theory y and theory x 
and theory Y was, you know, believing the best in people and believing that, but yeah, footnote two, and and making sure that, you know, you if you're focusing on what strengths and abilities are already there, then you're more likely to be able to build onto that rather than looking at what you don't have and then trying to build on from there. I think you're better off to look at what you do have and then go, okay, where can we go from here? The next thing I wanted to talk about was the implementing change. And again, some of the characteristics that are needed to help people transition and have that change implemented. And so a few of the things that we looked at in class involved breaking things down into like tasks, like it could be that it's a techno technological change or it's, you know, it could be that it's just um, task orientated changes. So you're, so you're breaking down little behaviors, little patterns, little things that, little step by step things that people are having to do. Um, and then the next side of that was relationship orientated changes and that's again like that person's communicating the vision and that person connecting with the right support people, having having the right people in place so that they can be supporting the change that's happening and helping people through it. So understanding the different changes that are trying to occur and actually um, breaking it down so that you can see how much change is actually needed and, and, and where you're needing to come in and, and support and provide resources and provide knowledge and provide teaching and provide all the different things for those two different areas which were task orientated and relationship orientated. And um, in the textbook it says, as a leader you can understand the reasons for resistance to change and use tools such as positive emotional attractor supportive relationships, repetition, involvement, and after-action reviews to help people change. So, footnote two. And, yeah, so a few of the things that they talked about in here was po a positive emotional attractor, and, it, and I thought this was a really good point, which people often are more likely to change if they emotionally connect with with what is happening, so so if a if a leader wants to bring about change, they need to somehow get that from the people to get buy-in, um, which again would hit that positive emo emotional attractor would mean okay. So what what is the what's like with them? What's in it for me? Footnote one, um, but also. How are they connecting with the person that's bringing about the change? Have they have they communicated the vision in such a way that that people are understand it and can see how much better things will be once it's once this is happening? That they're excited about it. That they're you know that there's anticipation. That there's positive positive feelings happening about the change. And the next one was make sure people have the support system and it refers to and hear about Alcoholics Anonymous and Weight Watchers, you know, when people are trying to make big changes, like it's really important that, that they feel emotionally supported, that, you know, often I know within large organisations that bring about massive changes, they often have HR people come in to help implement those changes and they have like counselling set up and you know because they understand that certain people could have been doing the same thing for like 20 years and all of a sudden they're saying we want you to do it this way and and that can actually be really really scary for some people so so making sure they have the the right support is so important and then use repetition and again like if you're thinking about that task orientated changes it's got to be that it's just consistently, consistently reminding, communicating, and allowing for that new thing that you're trying to bring about to just be done continuously. Um, 
yeah so that that could be I I just think of having reminders everywhere like just think of like having um, posters up all around the place or you know you think about getting people to wash their hands um, you have like signs up just you know we do it to kids all the time if you go to preschools there's signs everywhere of pictures just reminding them this is what you need to do after you go to the toilet or this is what you need to do after your lunch you know and I think even with adults that is quite a good thing to have in place because it's just going to keep bringing in the, that reminder and that repetition that is needed um, involve people early again that comes into um, that you know if People feel that they're a part of the change. If they've if they've had some kind of input into the change, that they're often a whole lot more likely to buy into it because there's been involvement. Footnote two. Um, so involving people early and letting them know about the changes that are going to happen and about why and the crisis that's going on and and what what needs to happen and not kind of getting halfway through it and then letting people know, oh, we've already done this and that. If, I think if people feel that they are that they matter and that you actually value them knowing, then then you're going to have a whole lot more success in helping them to actually not resist. Um, and then apply after action reviews, which is, you know, how are things going? How is this working? Getting feedback getting customer reviews, you know, getting just actually really saying, okay, have we have we done this well? Is this working? Um, and again, that we'll also see is, has it become the way things are done around here? Is it actually, is it actually fully stuck in a part of who we are now? So, yeah, so that's, that's that. So, so that it's, I found it this to be a really, really interesting topic. Um, and something that I really, really enjoyed learning about. And um, I really feel that uh, this is something that I'd like to look into further because I really like the idea of being able to be a person that can bring about change and can, you know, in whatever area I'm in, I even, like, I kind of look at it along the lines of, at the moment, like, I have children and often I'm trying to change things at home and I know you know that I want to be able to do that in a really effective way and I want to do it in a way that also isn't like nagging and just being mean and kind of bringing down the hard word all the time like I want to be able to help them transition into new things in a way that they love and they can see that that it's exciting and I can you know I can sell it to them and so I found this really, really helpful to be able to apply this to my life, just even within that area. Um, yeah, so, so it was a really good topic. So I'll um, finish there.